Hello, my name is RD and we are going to solve assessment problem 7.1 from Nielsen and Rida book. So this is the question. You can read it from the book. I will not read it because it's too long. And the first question is determine the initial current in the inductor. Okay, maybe let's answer that first, that initial current. Okay, because we need to redraw the circuit. So when the switch is still here so that will be at t is less than zero right so we will have we still have that 64 voltage source okay and then we also have that 30 ohm resistor and the switch position is still there so we will have 30 ohm here and we will have 90 ohm there Okay, and then because the switch has been there for a long time, the inductor here is a short circuit. So we will have it like this. Okay, and then the initial current in the inductor is this one here, the I0. Okay, we can calculate the I0 by using Ohm's law. So the I0 there is just the 60 volt. So we will have 60 divided by the resistance, 30 and 90. So I will have 30 plus 90. That will be 60 divided by 120. Therefore, we will have I0 that equal to 0 0.5 ampere. 0 0.5 ampere. And I think this is the answer for question A. Okay, now. Let's do the question B, the time constant. Okay, the time constant. So the switch has been moved now. So we we'll have at T is greater than zero. Okay, so let's redraw the circuit here. Okay, we will have that one here that will be 70. And this one will be 90. The unit of each resistor here is ohm. And then we will have 0 0.32 Henry. Okay, 0 0.32 Henry. And so we need to find out the time constant. The time constant is tau. And this is an RL circuit. An RL circuit, we can calculate the tau by L divided by R. Our inductance here is 0 0.32. And the resistance here is 70 plus 90. That will be 160. So we will have our tau here is this one here, 0. 0, 0, 0.002 second or tau is equal to 2 millisecond yeah i think that is the answer for problem b okay so now we need to find out c find i v1 and v2 okay maybe let's do kvl here and this is i right because I is the current that pass through inductor here, we can use KVL at loop I. KVL at I. Remember, KVL said that the sum of the voltage in a loop will equal to zero. Right? So, we will have this one here, 70 and 90. And that will be 160. But we need a voltage, so we multiply this by I. Okay, and an inside an inductor, the voltage will be L di dt. So the the inductance itself is 0 0.32. Okay, and then we will have di over dt, and all of that will equal to zero. And remember, we have I0 is 0 0.5. We have I0 is equal to 0. 
Okay, now we have changed this circuit problem into first order differential equation problem. Okay, maybe now our board is full. Let's clean up the board first. And we need to solve this equation here. Okay, this is a first order differential equation. Uh, and I think I will move this part here to the right hand side. So I will have 0 0.32 di over dt and that will equal to minus 160i okay and now let's divide both sides by 0 0.32 so i will have di over dt and that will be this should be minus 500 right yes, i have minus 500 of i Okay, let's move i here and dt there. So we'll have di over i, and that will be minus 500 dt. Okay, let's integrate both sides. Okay, on the left hand side, we will have the natural log of i. And on the right hand side, we will have e to the minus, I mean not e. That will be minus 500 t plus some constant okay but then we can move on the natural log to the right hand side and it become exponential function so we'll have this and because e to the c1 is also a constant i will write it like this so i will have a e to the minus 500 t right so we need to find out what a is but here we have the initial condition I0 is 0 0.5. So if we plug 0 to the t, we will have a e to the minus 500 multiplied by 0, and that will equal to 0 0.5. So e to the 0 will be 1. So I will have a on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, I still have 0 0.5. And we can plug this a is equal 0 0.5 to the to this equation so we will have id will equal to 0 0.5 e to the minus 500 t okay good now the question is not only asking about i but also v1 and v2 okay let's do v1 first v1 is the voltage in inductor so we will have v1 that should be L di over dt. And the value of the inductance itself is 0 0.32. And we need to find out the derivative of this one. So we will have 0 0.5 multiplied by minus 500. And then E to the minus 500. Okay, and this will equal to, that should be minus 80, e to the minus 500t. And this is v1. So this is v1, and this is it. Okay, and then v2t. Okay, maybe let's use another color. V2, what is V2? V2 is just, V2 is here, and I is flowing there, right? So I will have minus 70 multiplied by I. Minus 70 multiplied by I. But then, minus 70 multiplied by 0 0.5 is minus 35. E to the minus 500. So, we have all the question asked by question C, right? Okay, let's save this for question D. Okay, let's move on from there. Okay, so far we have calculated each part and now we need to find out part D. What percentage of the initial energy stored in the inductor? Okay, maybe let's... Let's calculate that first, the initial energy. What is the initial energy? Energy is 
equal to one half l i square. And remember, the initial means that at t is equal to zero, right? So we will have one half, and the l is zero point thirty two, and then the i because the t is at zero, so that will be zero point five, right? So we have zero point five square. Okay. And let's calculate this. So we will have what? Let's do calculator then. One half multiplied by zero point thirty two multiplied by zero point five square. Okay, zero point zero four. Zero point zero four. And the unit here will be joule, or we can have this as 40 millijoule. Okay, and then what they ask is uh, dissipated in the 90 ohm resistor after one millisecond. So the energy dissipated by R is equal 90 ohm at t is equal to one millisecond okay one millisecond okay remember that energy is just power multiplied by time but we can calculate power by i squared multiplied by r and then multiplied by time okay and the time is one millisecond remember that so we will have this 0 0.5 e to the minus 500 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 and this is squared then multiplied by 90 then multiplied by 1 1 millisecond so we need to multiply it by 10 to the minus 3 okay this is the job of calculator oh that's complicated Okay, so we'll have 0 0.5 and shift where is e e to the minus 500 to the 10 to the 3 to the minus 3 okay good good yeah that's all and it square then multiplied by 90 then multiplied by 10 to the minus 3. Okay, we will have 8.28. 8.28 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3. Joule. Or that will be 8.28 millijoule. And the percentage. Okay, percentage. I think we just to we just need to divide this one right so i'll have 8.28 divided by 40 multiplied by 100 percent and what is it let's do our calculator 8.28 divided by 40 multiplied by 100 that will be 20.7 percent and i think that's all for this problem okay thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye